Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be sharing with you how to make your own 3D letter gift box using your Creakin machine. This is a great gift idea for anyone because it can be personalized to different styles while still being created on a budget. Before we get started, I want to thank Cricut for sponsoring today's video. If you're not familiar with Cricut, let me tell you a little bit about them. A Cricut is a smart cutting machine that allows you to cut a wide variety of materials to create craft projects such as vinyl, cardstock, faux leather, and many more. Cricut Design Space is their software where you can create your own designs with over 100,000 images to choose from. With just a press of a button, these images can be sent to your Cricut machine to cut. I enjoy crafting with my Cricut because the possibilities to create are truly endless. Now let's get started on the tutorial. First, I'm going to go through the simple process of creating the letter gift box design. I actually found an SVG available to purchase on Cricut Design Space and I modified it to turn the 3D letter into an actual openable box that could be used as a gift box. You can find the image set by searching 3D letter or by entering this image number in the Cricut Design Space library. Today I'll be demonstrating how to make the letter A, but the steps that I'll be taking can be simply recreated with the letter you wish to work with. After adding the image to your canvas, ungroup the design. You'll notice you will have a few elements that are rectangular shaped as well as four images of the actual letter. Since we'll be turning this into an actual box that you can add goodies inside, I'm going to delete the smallest rectangle shape because that was originally to support the middle part of the 3D letter. However, in my case, I'll be adding a clear view to the top of the box so this will be unnecessary for us to cut. For now, move the letters to the side while we make a couple of adjustments to the other elements. For the letter A, I have three rectangular shapes. Notice that they have tabs along both the top and bottom. All I'm going to do is remove the top portion of the tabs because again, we want this letter box to have a base and a lid. So in order to do that, you don't need tabs on both sides because this would close off the 3D letter, which is not what we want. Deleting them is very simple. Just click on shapes and select the square. Unlock the size and cover the tabs along the top. You can use the score line as a guide. After selecting both the main image and the shape, click on the slice button located on the bottom right corner and delete the slice results. That way you're only left with something like this. I repeated the same process with the other two elements. Bring the score layer to the front and contour the top portion since we don't need it after slicing the images. I noticed one of the images was missing two cut lines on a tab after using the slicing tool, so I went back and added two lines from the shape section, and then I changed the line type to cut on the editing menu. Once they are ready, highlight each of the images and click on attach. This will help keep all of the layers together, allowing the machine to cut it on the exact same position that you designed it. A box always needs its base and a lid, so I highlighted and duplicated the images. Now let's focus on the letters. You will have two pairs. One of them is slightly thicker compared to the other. First, I'm going to contour the thicker letters by clicking on the hide all contours button to turn them into solid images. These will be our basis for the box. I also adjusted the colors of the elements according to the materials that I'll be utilizing. Next, duplicate one of the contoured letters. The elements on the right will be used to create our lid. Like I mentioned earlier, I want my box to have a transparent view, so I'll be using clear plastic or a clear acetate sheet. I changed the duplicated image color to gray to represent the plastic. You only need one of these thin letters, so go ahead and delete one. To create a border around the clear plastic element, I added an offset to the thin letter A. Slice the offset result in the original element to create a thin border like this. Lastly, add an offset to the border we just created. All of the elements should fit like a puzzle. This next step is optional depending on how you would like to personalize the box. You could either add a name or a happy birthday design. I decided to add a happy birthday wish. I found this one on Cricut Design Space. To add dimension, I created a few layers using the offset feature. Adjust the size of the project by highlighting all of the elements to make sure everything is being proportionally resized. My box will be around 11.5 inches long. Our design is now ready to cut. Click on the green make it button located on the top right corner and load your materials on your Cricut mats to match each of the colored layers. This is the color scheme I'm going for. It's a mixture of solid, glitter, and foil cardstock as well as craft board. If you didn't know already, Cricut actually offers cardstock sheets that are 12 by 24 inches long, which is perfect to make large projects just like the one we're creating. I'm loading the material on Cricut standard grip mats and using a brayer tool to make sure they're nicely placed onto the mat. 
By the way, if you would like to recreate this, I have the link to this project ready for you to use on Creaky Design Space located in the description box of this video, or you could also find my profile on Creaky Design Space as DIYholic. Today I'm using my Cricut Explore 3 machine to cut the thin materials, insert the fine point blade into clamp B, and also don't forget to insert the scoring stylus into clamp A. Once you're done cutting the cardstock, open clamp B and switch the blade for the deep cut blade to cut the craft board and the clear acetate sheet. This blade will help you achieve nice and sharp cuts. Carefully remove the cardstock from your mat by flipping it over and pulling it away instead of directly pulling it to prevent folding or bending. Before assembling your 3D letter box, look back at your design to make sure everything was cut. For the letter A, these are all of the pieces for the top and bottom of the box. The tabs on the rectangular shapes for the lid were a bit longer than the base we will be gluing them onto, so to fix this, I simply took my paper trimmer and cut them smaller, that way the tabs won't be visible after they're glued. Since we used a scoring stylus, we now need to fold all of the tabs, that way they're easier to puzzle together. I'm going to assemble the lid first. I'm taking the three rectangular shapes with tabs to glue them along the edge of the border offset with the help of craft glue for paper projects. I recommend adding pressure with your fingers for a couple of seconds as you glue to reinforce it while it dries. Take your time and add a generous amount of glue, but also try not to add too much because you don't want to overflow it when you press it down either. The precision tip on this craft glue made it easier to control. So far, this is what the lid is looking like. When you turn it around, you can see that the tabs are not visible at all since they are glued to the back side of the border. Next, take the clear acetate layer and secure it to the back. Using hot glue will give it a solid bond. Apply the last of the elements to the front of the lid. I'm setting it to the side while I assemble the happy birthday image.
To create the 3D effect, place the adhesive squares to the backside of the cardstock layers and add them around the borders of the shape and in the middle to add support. Remove the paper backing and begin layering them together directly on the top from the largest to the smallest. All we have left to do is assemble the pieces for the base. The process is the same as we did earlier with the lid except there are less layers because the base is solid. I cut two layers for the solid base because I wanted to hide the tops with the glitter cardstock layer and that is it. We are done with our project. You can test the box to make sure it opens and closes properly before adding your goodies inside. Here's a quick tip, recycle your cardstock scraps and turn them into paper shreds to use as gift fillers. This gift box can be filled with quite a good amount of goodies. I filled mine up with things I found at the dollar store such as fussy socks, these cute scrunchies, nail polishes, acrylic nails, a bath bomb, and a few beauty products. You could also totally add a gift card or a note. I topped it off by adding a bow with this pretty ribbon. I love the way this project turned out. It's a great affordable personalized gift for any occasion. Not only can you do 3D letters, but also numbers. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments and I hope you found this video helpful. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys next time with a new DIY.